Hello, and welcome to Oliver's Greenhouse. Now, on this slightly chilly October morning, well, nearly, nearly the end of October, it's nearly Halloween, so uh, last night it got really, really chilly. Uh, it got down to about sort of five degrees here. It was noticeably colder than it has been in previous weeks. We've actually been enjoying some really mild weather. Now, the garden is an absolute tip. The grass is really long because it's not really been get, getting that cold enough to slow everything's growth down. So me and the kids are going to be tackling the front and the back gardens today. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a bit of time this morning. I've got some really, really cool things which are in flower at the moment. So we're going to go in the greenhouse and have a look at those now. And uh, also got some things which are not yet in bloom, but will be soon. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing this morning. Okay, so right off the bat, one of the first things I noticed as soon as I walk in the greenhouse this morning is the sweet, pungent aroma, which is coming from one of my Oncidiums, uh, which is, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I often upload pictures of uh, some of the orchids which are coming out in bloom, so anything that's really interesting that's going on in the greenhouse. Uh, so this one's figured on there quite a lot. It's got a, a lot of likes. People have really enjoyed it. It's, a, it's, one of the, it's, it's the orchid that basically got eaten by the rat, which I then managed to save. What I'll do is I'll pick you up, We'll have a creep sweet round. We'll start from one end, of, because as most of you know my greenhouse, all the orchids are on this side. And, well, that, that's a lie, actually. Most of the orchids are on this side. Most of the carnivorous plants are on this side. Uh, and there's sort of something at every point along the uh, bench that we can have a look at. So I'll pick you up. I'll move you down to a normal height, so you're sort of in line with the plants. We'll have a chat. You get rid of my ugly mug, and we'll have a look at uh, some of the orchids which are in flower. And the Oncidium will be about halfway, so we'll have a look at that. But the smell, honestly, the whole greenhouse is full of this rich, pungent perfume at the moment. It's really, really very nice. It's uh, one, of the, one of the main reasons I, I, I keep hold of this orchid. It's not really my cup of tea, but the smell is unbelievable. Let's move you. Okay, so some of you remember I had that massive Paphio pedalum. Well, this is the result of the, uh, of the divisions I took. Sorry, I've actually wandered off away from the camera. I've got to move something out of the way. It's just in the wrong location. It's going to get in the way. Right, so yeah, this, this, were the, um, this was my giant Paphia pedalum jersey freckles. Well, I know it's jersey freckles. If you know it's something else, please feel free to correct me. So it was one monster plant. I've had it for years. I divided it into five new smaller plants. It then got a fungal infection. So there's some remnants here. There's still a little bit on this guy here. Uh, ended up with that sort of brown dye back um, on the leaves. Um, I sprayed the whole, the whole lot of rose clear. I went mental, literally just sprayed everything with rose clear. And that seems to have completely stopped it on most of the plants bar a couple. But now I've got one, two, three, I've got four. This one's got two flower spikes on it. Uh, so yeah, I've got three plants which are in flower at the moment. This guy's got a flower spike coming as well, but they just look awesome. I've had it for such a long time as well. It's just one of those orchids I could never get rid of, but I will be selling uh, some, some divisions of this, um, or some of them. Maybe not whilst they're in flower, it's just too much of a pain in the back, so I'm trying to um, pack them uh, so they don't get destroyed. We zoom in on the bloom. There we go, we can have a look at that, especially if I pull it towards us. There we go, like that. So it's got these fantastic purple spots up at the back. And then there's the, uh, the typical trap for trapping insects, which forces them to climb up and emerge through these holes by my thumb here, which is next to the pollen. So it forces the insect to pollinate it or to be pollinated in return. Fantastic looking plant, uh, or plant, should I say. Been with me a long time. So that's that guy there. If I zoom this out and turn over to the side, can you just see... If I zoom in again, over the back there, hiding against the wall is my long-suffering, it's just slightly out of focus, my long-suffering um, Dendrobium dicheoides. Well, that is just, it's bloomed, it's gone completely mad. They're actually just coming, they're almost going over a little bit. Lots of new growth, some of the old leaves have died off, um, but it's produced these really pretty purplish pinky flowers, which are, unfortunately, as I say, going over a little bit. The weather's just been so rubbish here. Um, hasn't really been worth filming recently, so you can have a look at those those blooms. I think they look stunning. Really, really quick. Almost unbelievably pink. They almost don't look real. Yeah, very, very pretty. And it flowers obviously from mainly from the old um, the old um, pseudo bulbs, stems, whatever you want to call them. So yeah, that's that guy. We haven't killed it. In fact, it's flowering. It's flowering like an absolute treat. 
Um, although I would say the overall vitality of this orchid, I'm not entirely sure. You can kind of see there's some new growths coming and emerging from the top of it here. So it's, it, and this is a new, uh, a, a new, a new stem, and here's a new stem. So I don't know. I think the verdict's still out a little bit on this, and there's another new growth just down here as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm not doing something right. I'm not sure if it's just not a very happy orchid. I can't really suss it out. Okay, here's another interesting little orchid. It's not in flower yet, but those of you who will be in Zervan may spot that it will be soon. It's kind of got this weird green algae that grows over it. I have to keep wiping it off. It's a pain in the backside. Now this was sold to me as um, Pluritalis shidi. <coughs> shidi eye. I'm not entirely sure that it is. It just doesn't, it doesn't have the right characteristics for me. But luckily we're going to be able to find out soon. If I zoom us in, whoop. Because down there, wiggling around near the palm of my hand, is a flower spike. Hopefully you guys can see that with a bud which is emerging on it as well. So we're going to actually be able to put it to bed and find out what this thing actually is. Um, but yeah, I'm not convinced it is what I was sold as. We have another one of those orchids coming up as well in a minute, which I'm not very happy about. Okay, zoom you guys out so you can see. Oh, hang on. So I've forgotten how to work my own camera. There we go. Right. Moving swiftly on. Okay, so down in front of us is just a sea of Scaphocephalum blooms. Um, this is uh, Scaphocephalum gibbosum. There's some good flowers. Looking quite cool over there, but it's produced just, there's just loads. It just flowers constantly. That's my kind of orchid. We've got the orchids we got from Equigenera. They've put on lots of new growth, so they've been a success. I've also noticed that this poroglossum over here you might just be able to see it for those of you with good eyes just by my finger just there just touching it now that is a flower spike so i'm pretty excited about those because those of you that know about poroglossum they have a trapping mechanism so the flowers actually move and capture the pollinator um, and hold it there for sort of up to sort of half an hour which is quite exciting so i'm looking forward to that Lots of new growth. Very unusual when the new growth emerges, it sort of remains really, really veined. Uh, it looks really, really pretty, and then it sort of mottles and goes a sort of darker colour. But yeah, all of these orchids have put on loads of new growth since I've had them. There's the scat, that's the other poroglossum there, that's put on some nice new leaves as well. So everything's surviving so far, which is nice. Over the back, or directly up, there's Restrepia gutulata. I'll see if it'll focus in on it. About here, you can see some uh, some of the blooms there. That's been with me a long time, that plant. It flowers all the time. It's really, really good. Over the back, hidden away, there are some more tiny Scaphocephalums, which are in bloom. And up the back, that is Scaphocephalum marinoi. I think it's marinoi. Loads more weird, unusual shaped, beautiful blooms on that guy. Well, oh, I'm not even pointing at him. There we go. Whoop. Moving around. There we go. So lots of pretty little blooms on this, so that's fantastic. Also, if we go up above, up here, those of you who know that is my favourite orchid in the whole greenhouse. I'm sure it's zoomed in as much as we can so we can see it. This is Bulbophyllum barbigerum, and it's got one flower spike there, another flower spike on top, and where you can't actually see it, there's another flower, it's got three flower spikes on it, so fingers crossed that's going to bloom for me because that is an amazing plant, a properly amazing plant. It has the most unusual flowers uh, that wiggle around and they've got weird tufts on them and yeah, they're just brilliant. Right. Okay, so as, prob uh, as promised, without further ado, here is Oncidium uh, sotuanum or sotanum. Uh, it's often sold as um, uh, Oncidium ornithorhynchum, but that's just not quite correct. Uh, ornithorhynchum's actually got yellow flowers, whereas it's got very lush, sort of pinky purpley flowers with very yellow uh, centres to them, and it produces the most intense fragrance. It literally fills the whole greenhouse full of its smell. Ah, it's one of those orchids, you know, the ones that you can't walk by without going, oh my God, it smells amazing. So this is one of those, and uh, it, was, it got basically got eaten by a rat. It was in the old greenhouse, or in my old conservatory, uh, the rats came at night like predator 
out of the darkness and consumes about 60 to 70 percent of the orchids. I don't know why I particularly like this one. Maybe it was just particularly tasty. I mean, it smells almost good enough to eat. It's almost like a Parma Violet if you like those sweets. I don't know. Always taste and smell like grannies. Um, but it's recovered fantastically. So lots of new growth. Got two new uh, pseudo bulbs, two new growths, and it's just put on a probably its best display of blooms it's ever done for me. So maybe the secret is to let your orchids get partially ratty and if you want the most out of their blooms. I'll pick you up because I'm looking directly at the sun which is directly behind you at the moment which makes it very difficult not to appear uh, like looking like a bit of a weird pirate with squinty eyes whilst I'm talking to you. I'll move you guys in, we'll have a little look at the blooms. Okay so here's a close up of the flowers, um, or well, the racings of flowers which emerge. There's the plant there. There's another big flower spike which heads off down this way. If I zoom in whilst the uh, sun's good and I'm not creating too much of a shadow, we can have a bit of a closer look at the flowers. They're very dainty. They look a bit like little pink uh, flying squirrels. Well, I think they do anyway. And yeah, it just, it's just one of the most, it's probably the most fragrant orchid in my whole greenhouse. A few little tiny flower spikes just emerging from the top of the plant there. And one more flower spike which runs off over this way, carrying hundreds of little flowers. And disappearing off over towards that box of Nepenthes seedlings, which are down there. Right, up here is a really super awesome, amazing Bulbophyllum orchid, which is in bloom at the moment. First time blooming for me. Looks wicked, love it. Smells terrible if you get close to it, but I can't smell it from here, so that, that's a bonus. I'll pick it up, and I'll bring it down. Okay, so what I've discovered is actually very hard to position this in a position where it's easy enough for us to uh, have a really good look at it because of the way it's growing. It's growing in one of my, on one of my uh, saucer mounts, you see, which it really enjoys, really grows really well on it. It's produced two pretty impressive flower spikes the larger of the two is this one up here. Um, but it's very hard to get it in a position where I can actually film it close up because of the way it's, uh, well, the way it's growing. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll probably put it back up on there and we'll have a bit of a closer look at it um, in situ. But before that, I'll hold it up to the camera. I'll come behind you so that I can hold it in, uh, in, in such a manner that we can see it. And we'll have a close up look at these blooms because they are really awesome, but oh, they really smell bad. But only close up. Okay, so here's a bit of a close up of the uh, of the the uppermost flower spike in the blooms. It's got four flowers. Um, it's got, you can probably see the typical Bulbophyllum wobbling or hinged lip there, which moves around and basically is designed to uh, um, unbalance the pollinator, dunking it forwards, in, ensuring that it either pollinates or deposits pollen or picks up a big pollen parcel or polliner. It's got these sort of purple wavy flag appendages to the top of the blooms and these long um, red striped sepals with beautiful tails. If I zoom in, I'll be able to get a bit of a, a bit of a close up there. I tried to wobble it around too much, but you can see uh, the flowers in a lot more detail. There's a bit of a pain in the backside trying to find somewhere for this to uh, stand up so we could bloom it, uh, so we could film it when we're talking about bloom it. Um, but here's a, we've got relatively good lighting here. So and this thing really does pong. If you get your nose right up to it, it does smell like roadkill. Uh, it's not a very pleasant smell at all. Okay, so I've let go of that flower spike. And there's another flower spike just down here. Now, this is a great little orchid. It's very pretty. Uh, it rambles along my uh, saucer mounts. Seems to really enjoy um, this environment and uh, growing in that position. Um, however, it's an imposter because I was actually sold, this is supposed to be Bulbophyllum flabellum veneris, um, which as you, some of you may know, has got sort of like a symmetrical whirl of uh, flowers that emerge from um, the, the, the flower spike. And they've got a sort of uh, a pink and whitey cream sort of coloration to them. They're very uniform looking. So this ended up actually being a very large, mature Rothschildianum. You think, bonus, absolutely brilliant. What are you complaining about, Oliver? Well, if you hadn't gone out a few weeks ago and bought a Bulbophyllum Rothschildianum, 
then uh, you might be able to understand why I was particularly hacked off with this because now I have two of them. So we've got the one I've mounted and one in a pot, both of which are in spikes. So um, I have two fantastic representations of this orchid species, which are both going to be in bloom pretty close to each other. So that is slightly irritating. Some of you may have spotted this, some of you more observant may have spotted this orchid here, which is in the back. This is one of the rescue orchids. This is sort of a generic hybrid. I think it was sold as Dendrobian Sianook or something like that. And it's sort of struggling along. Uh, it's not doing super well, uh, but it has produced um, a sort of like a, a basic go at flowering. It's, it's going over it now, but uh, <coughs> I guess a marginal success is it's not dead. It's still growing. Um, I'm pretty happy with that and I'm not entirely sure what to do with it. We'll just see how big we can grow it probably. That's always a good, uh, um, always quite an exciting and fun thing to do. See if we can grow it into some mega massive dendrobian hybrid. It's still really getting over uh, the maltreatment it received uh, in the shop. Okay, moving on. Can you tell what it is yet? Any of you guys out there know what this is? Yeah, you guessed it. This is Bulbophyllum. Echino labium. Now this is this flower spit, spike has been developing for a good long while now. It's going to have two blooms. It's a sequential bloomer. What appears to be a sequential bloomer. It's got this very long lip with this weird sort of purple, almost like hairy, spiky covering to it. These very attractive stripes, which is what Bul where Bulbophyll and um, Jersey gets those fantastic striped sepals from. And there's another flower which will emerge from it as well. And I'm just, this didn't smell when it first came out, but now, oh my God, it is rancid. It smells like farmyard, a dead farmyard, a dead farmyard with dead things in it. That's how it really does smell. And uh, at first I didn't really notice um, it when it was first fully open. It didn't really have a succinct smell, but in time it has gained uh, its reputation rightly deserved as a real stinker. This does smell. I keep moving around the greenhouse. I'm like, oh, if I trod in something, what is that? And then I'm actually, it's, it's this. I keep getting a, a pungent whiff, whiff wafting underneath my nostrils. Uh, so that is a beautiful, stunning, amazing flower. Um, and yes, like everyone says, it does, does really smell bad, really, really bad. It stinks. But yeah, I, I forgive it because it's got this cool tongue thing that hangs at the bottom and it just looks mad. So that, that is a very awesome orchid. Very happy with you. It's also massive as well. Bearing in mind I've got this as a division. You can see the, the actual plant over here. This is one of the leaves. It's, it's huge. It's an absolutely massive plant. It's almost like, uh, it almost rivals lobii for size. It's huge. Okay, center of shot here. This is uh, the penultimate orchid I'm gonna show, which is in bloom. Um, I think, is it the penultimate? No, this is going to be the last orchid that I'm going to show you, which is in bloom. Uh, this is a first time bloomer for me. It's the first time I've tried to grow one of these species anyway. Um, and it was kindly given to me or donated by a member of the uh, you guys, the YouTube community. And um, I potted it up, uh, changed the potting media, potted it up. I've been giving it lots and lots of water and it's produced a big old flower spike. And it's in bloom at the moment. So there's another bud here. It sort of produces branching um, flower spikes. There's another branch of the flower spike here. I've never grown a Phragmopidium. This is Phragmopidium, I think it's Cardinale. Phragmopidium Cardinale. So I've never grown one of these before. Um, and I like it. It's very, very pretty. I think it's a primary hybrid. I can't remember what it was between. I'm going to move you guys over this way a little bit. Try and stay out of the sunlight so you can see. And then we'll zoom in and have a look. Like the flower a little close up so yeah it's got this very bulbous mouth this beautiful uh, like rouge red uh, coloration some speckles inside and then an unusual sort of uh, like hairy arrangement in there where the pollen are and it's obviously the, it, it, it's the same sort of trapping mechanism as paphia pedalum the insect drops down inside i'm sure there's some sort of nectar uh, treat or something to lure it in there drops down and there's some hairs at the back. The insect has to crawl out through this hole here and the pollen rubs off on the, um, on the insect and is carried away to uh, hopefully the same species or uh, a close enough species whereby it can pollinate it. So 
Never going Phragmopidium before. What I've been doing is I did a little bit of research on them. I know they like a lot of water, so I've been keeping it very, very moist. There's going to be there's been lots of frequent watering, and I've been using crushed eggshells um, on top of the media here as well to add calcium because they like lots of calcium. So, and it seems to go really well. Well, it seems to be very happy. There's lots of new growth down the bottom. Let me zoom into the bottom of the plant here. There's a new growth here, a new growth here. When they first emerged, I'm not sure if it was whilst they were emerging. Um, there's a bit of a, a bit of damage to the uh, to the leaves here. They've gone sort of brown on the ends. So it's this one here. This is the most mature, uh, latest uh, growth. But as the newer leaves emerge, they're not tainted in any way. So I'm not sure what that was or what I, perhaps I was doing something wrong. But it seems to grow quite happily. So yeah, yeah, that was uh, definitely a first time, uh, a first species for me. Never grown one of these before. I know they can get pretty massive. <laughs> I'd be um, excuse me, be interested in growing more of these because um, they're very, very pretty. Okay, so thanks for coming along in this video. It's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour, but it's been quite good fun. I've shown you some really, I think, some really cool plants which are in bloom. I think they look really, really awesome. And some first, a lot of first-time bloomers for me. Um, some which are really pretty. Some which are really interesting but smell really, really bad. Some which are really pretty but smell really, really nice. So it's been a really nice mix of, uh, of plants and blooms. And um, there's some other things which I haven't shown you, but I decided to show you not on, on purpose, basically, because I want to be able to show you something later on uh, in the week. So I've got some new flyer spikes coming up on a... Hang on, this is very unprofessional. Is that Rhynchus stele bictonian, bictonian, bictoniensis? Rhynchus stele bictoniensis. I've never bloomed it before, uh, but I've just noticed it's got a nice big flower spike coming on it. So, <clears throat> that's something interesting to look forward to in the near future as well. So, all is looking rosy at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed looking around my greenhouse. Thanks again for my Patreon supporters. Thanks for your continued support, especially you, Valerie. You know who you are. You know why I'm thanking you. Thank you ever so much. What I've been thinking of doing is I've been thinking of putting a whiteboard up here. So it's sort of Oliver's greenhouse roll of honour for all of those people whose uh, ongoing support has uh, sort of made this made this project sort of doable and help run the greenhouse through the winter because we're heading into that awful period of time in England now when it's going to be dull, cold, rainy and miserable and potentially we may have some snow this year. I don't know how it's going to pan out. We'll have to wait and see. So uh, thanks again for joining me. I hope you tune in for another edition of Oliver's Greenhouse soon and uh, I'll see you all again. Bye bye.